Hi, it's Adam. I'm enjoying a bit of a stroll and I was thinking about recognition in the workplace. Now, recognition is a great thing. It's a huge topic and it's really about how we motivate people and how about we get them talented and feel appreciated for what it is that they do. And before I talk about anything even, you know, like fancy or complicated, it's always worth remembering that the most fantastic piece of recognition that you can do, the piece that sits at the heart of all of it, and really that it, the building block, is thank you. Thank you for listening to this call. Thank you for the work that you've done today. It's really shocking how little people hear and say thank you in the workplace. People want to know that they're doing a good job. People want to know that they're appreciated for the work they can do. And it is so simple and so quick to simply throw in a thank you. And yet, how often does your manager tell you that? When was the last time you heard that? And the sheer power I've seen over the years of a senior director or a CEO taking the time to make a personal thank you. So, recognition sorted then. That's everything. Well, not quite. It's the building block, it's where it starts, but there's a lot more that could be done. When it comes to modern recognition platforms, you see some simply incredible things that they can do. Social media style platforms that essentially have all your employees on, they're on phone, they're on PC, you can record quick messages like this and just whip them across to someone else, and you can get that thanks going on. But importantly, they can empower your line managers. When it comes to recognition, thank you, fine, that's your bedrock. But what about when people go above and beyond? Or what about where people really exemplify the behaviours that you want to see in your workplace? When it comes to recognition, the three main key aspects of it are being timely, targeted, and unexpected. Now, timely, simple enough. If someone does something good, you want to do it and recognise it in the moment. Having an annual award, having even a quarterly award, it's all well and good, but the thing is, the sooner you can follow up on the great behaviour or great work, the sooner people feel it and the sooner they connect the award to the behaviour and therefore will be more likely to repeat the behaviour. Targeted in that it needs to be something of value to the individual that's receiving it. So if you think about it, you know, take the classic bottle of champagne. You know, it's symbolic, it's nice, but some people don't drink. I don't really drink now. If I get a bottle of champagne, it's like, great, I've been recognised, but I'm not going to do much with that. Generally speaking, they sit in there and then eventually I find some excuse to just pull it out on some truly random family occasion that uh, does not traditionally re uh, require a bottle of champagne. So instead it needs to be something that works to people's interests, something that they will actually take value from. Now, nowadays, to be honest, a lot of companies cheat in that you can use vouchers or you can use some sort of point system in a recognition system. So therefore you sort of build up a pool of uh, redeemable things that you can put onto an object that they would actually appreciate. If you're gonna do that, it's important to make sure that you do have a bit of a range of items. Uh, a colleague of mine once talked about how he picked up points and eventually ended up redeeming them for a nose hair trimmer. Um, which is fantastic. He was kind of like, you know, okay, I never had a nose hair trimmer before. It was, to be honest, the only thing that he thought he'd really appreciate in there. But at the same time, in his bathroom cabinet now, he's got this nose hair trimmer. Every time he looks at it, he's more just amused that he ended up redeeming his points for a nose hair trimmer. So again, targeted. Try and make sure that you've got something that people will truly appreciate. And finally, unexpected. Now, this is often the most underappreciated aspect of recognition. If people accept, expect something, they don't value it. Um, easy example, your salary. Now, when you get paid each month, how often do you feel, oh wow, fantastic, I've been paid, thanks company. Now for me, I don't feel that way, that's the deal. I turned up to work, I did my job, you paid me. I expected that, that's my due, that's what I deserve. And the same with recognition. 
if you have a system where people do some work and then you know oh, oh after I finish this project I always get this thing it's not recognition anymore that's actually just compensation that's a reward for a job and it's unexpected and people there was a delightful little experiment that really sort of showed this up and how it could work. In a university and they got some people in to do some basic tasks, kind of like filing books and that sort of thing. Now they split them into three groups and they paid them all a different amount. And you know, it's a little bit of a while since I saw the specific numbers so bear with me. We'll assume that one group got $10 an hour. The other group got $10 an hour but were told that if they did it in a particular speed or a particular way, they would get a $2 an hour bonus. And the last group were told just that they were getting $10 an hour, but there was a secret $2 an hour bonus if they hit the targets. So when the experiment concludes, the three groups have done what they've done. And actually all three groups have hit this target, but the ones that appreciated their reward the most were the people with the unexpected $2 an hour bonus because they'd done the work for $10 an hour and then they'd been told that they got a bonus for being really good and they didn't expect it and they didn't appreciate it and they were really appreciative of it. The group they uh, thought the, best, uh, the next was actually the ones on just $10 an hour again. Again, they were happy with what they got. It was part of their deal. The final group were those on the got $10 and then the $2 an hour bonus and knew about it. They weren't resentful of it, but you know, the $2 an hour bonus, well that was the deal. You told me if I did this, I would get it. Well, I did that, so now you have to give it to me. It was expected. So, when it comes to recognition, after the basic thank you, don't forget the thank you, you have your timely, targeted and unexpected recognition. Try to come up with ways that you can pick out that great behaviour, those great people who are living up to the values of your organisation and find ways to sprinkle a little love on them. Call them out, call them out close to the time and give them something that they will truly value. And at its heart, that's a modern recognition scheme. It does can be done in lots of different ways Different companies, different countries have quite different value systems. A fascinating little piece of work was with this company that were international, they had offices in America, the UK and Europe, and then in the Far East and Asia. And when it comes to recognition, they had really, truly quite different takes. In America, it was all about the individual. The people were saying if they got some kind of recognition or award, they wanted to be sung from the rafters and said, hey, Jane, she's fantastic look at what she did, let's all cheer. In the UK and Europe, yeah, a little bit different. It's kind of like, yep, yeah, no, I'd appreciate the recognition, the individual recognition, but I'm not so fussed about, you know, being a huge song and dance. And then, over in the Far East, it's all about the team. Genuinely, don't call me out. Don't celebrate me as an individual. That will embarrass me, that will be socially awkward. If there's any kind of recognition, I want recognition of the team accomplishment. I want us to be celebrated together. So, there we are. A little bit about recognition in a modern workplace. Thanks for taking a walk with me. See you later.